In this edition of the OBG Corner, editorial manager of the PNG Report, Mark Venditti, speaks to outgoing European Union ambassador, Martin Dim. Good evening and welcome back uh, to Oxford Business Group uh, Corner, OBG Corner. Uh, tonight our guest is Martin Dim, the European ambassador to Papua New Guinea. Uh, Martin has been in Papua New Guinea for four years, as so we're very interested to hear his experience. Beside the traditional uh, role of the European Union uh, to uh, implement um, trade, the political cooperation uh, and uh, development aid, uh, one of the main tasks for Martin has been to bridge the gap between two very distant uh, parts of the world, but perhaps not that distant, and this is what we're going to find out tonight. Uh, Martin, thank you very much uh, for coming to the show. Uh, I wanted to say just something uh, to start this uh, conversation. Once you go out a night in uh, Port Moresby, as well as other uh, cities in uh, Papua New Guinea, it's not very uncommon to sit down on a table and uh, see four or five different nationalities. And nowadays we're seeing a lot of Europeans, we hear a lot of European languages. So maybe the distance between these two uh, parts of the world is sort of uh, bridging, would you say? Yeah, it's an interesting question. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, Marco, for, 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 for that. Um, it's interesting to see that in Papua New Guinea, um, often people tell me we are so far away from Europe. And in fact, in Europe, people tell me we are so far away from Papua New Guinea. But then when it comes to reality, uh, here in Paul Mosby, you discover a, a large um, European community, basically, be it business persons that have been here for many, many years already in the third or second generation. And, uh, and also um, persons that have come more recently to the country to do business or to do research also. And um, overall, I uh, went to many meetings here and I suddenly discovered, wait a moment, this is all European, <laughs> or a lot of it is European. So the links are very strong in a way, despite the geographical distance. But uh, there's also the historical linkage, of course, there's a historical linkage with the, um, with, uh, the United Kingdom I mean, in fact, the head of state of um, Papua New Guinea is the same head of state as of a European uh, Union member state, which is the United Kingdom, which is the Queen um, of England. And, um, and we have also the, the German history and more in the northern part of the, of the country. Um, and if I go to Rabaul, I'm often addressed uh, on this one. I'm asked uh, about the, the past of the country and what I know about it. I see the photos, I see Rabaul. So there's a lot of um, linkages, I think, between Europe and Papua New Guinea. Very good. So what would, you, what would you say the European Union has been achieved so far, especially under your umbrella? What do you think you have achieved as an ambassador here for four years? I want to be modest, there's always that you can achieve more, of course. Um, um, but clear is that we have uh, changed, I think, dramatically our relationship over the last three, four years. Um, partly because we in Europe, we have established a, a new uh, service, which is uh, the foreign service of the European Union, so to speak. We have created a foreign department for, f a department for foreign affairs, basically, which is called the European External Action Service, based in Brussels. I'm, a, I'm an official of this new service and, um, and when I came here uh, for the first time I was representing the European Union uh, for political matters, for foreign, foreign policy matters. So that starts with uh, normal exchanges about human rights for example or uh, alliance building in the United Nations in New York. We have more recently also started talking about for example visa a visa-free travel be between the two um, between the two uh, countries or entities, and um, we have also uh, had uh, d um, many more discussions about security uh, politics in the world and uh, simply finding out what our partner thinks and then seeing whether we have um, a possibility to al align ideas and work uh, jointly also in international fora. One important example might also be in, in the close future, the uh, climate change discussions. Yes. We have a big conference coming up in Paris yes. in December of this year. Uh, we do hope that out of this conference comes an ambitious agreement which will help the world to contain um, the temperature increase uh, and contain climate change, which is in the interest obviously of Papua New Guinea but also very much in, in our own interest in, in, in Europe. So we are working very much on, 
all sorts of things in this political dialogue area. And then, uh, you already mentioned earlier, we have built a second strong pillar over recent years, um, which is trade yes. and investment. But before we go to trade, let's talk about climate change, because the Pope has just met uh, uh, the Mr. Ban Ki-moon in, in Rome, and uh, very soon he will actually travel to Washington to address the uh, American Congress about climate mm. change. So it seems that this issue for once is, uh, is becoming a global issue, even though it is a global issue, countries tend to think independently. Do you think that the moment has arrived really that an effort has to meet by pretty much everybody on this issue, because climate change is not an opinion anymore, is a fact, and it will affect country uh, as PNG much more than others in Europe or, or perhaps the United States. Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, the, 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 the difficult thing about climate change perhaps <laughs> is that uh, nobody knows exactly um, who will affect it how, but we all do know that if we go into this um, risk zone of having a temperature increase that spirals out of control. Um, it has risks for all of us, and it has risks also for stability, it has risks for security, it has risks for migration flows. It, it, it is endless, the, the issues that stand behind such an uncontrolled um, increase of temperature. So I think we all, um, and I said this, uh, either the European Union, United States, Papua New Guinea, or whoever in the world, we all have a same very strong interest in containing this. And we all know we can only do it together. So whatever we do in Europe is useless if uh, it's not embedded in an overall package of what everybody else does. So we have uh, gone forward, we have made already our own commitments on containing emission of yes. greenhouse gases um, practically on our own, but it doesn't help. We need everybody on board and um, everybody can contribute in, in this context. And in, in Papua New Guinea, of course, uh, for example, we could speak about forestry. Uh, Papua New Guinea offers a service to the world by having this great forest, which is still there. Uh, we hear that there's an 80% coverage of the landmass of Papua New Guinea by primary rainforest. And it's uh, the third largest in the world, as far as I know, so it's a, it's a big, big factor. How to protect that in future But there is um, always that sort of important issue. There is a resistance, though, from developing nations or from emerging nations, and the argument is always the same. They're saying, you, first world, have done the damage that everybody's suffering for today. Now you're asking us to make that sacrifice. So how do you respond to that from your point of view as an ambassador when you hear that argument? Well, let, let me jump into, into a position of uh, Papua New Guinea. If I was here, I would say, um, uh, the forest is an asset for my country, um, uh, so uh, we, we, can, we can, of course, uh, preserve this asset for the country independently of what anybody else says in the world, because it's our forest, it's customary land, we benefit from it. We benefit in many, many different aspects, from food, from shelter, from building materials, from log export, whatever, uh, and we should keep it. So that is a purely national, egoistic uh, point of view. But we can also take the European point, egoistic point of view, which is we would be very interested if Papua New Guinea keeps the forest. So that's why we are coming here also with aid money and why we are trying to support, in fact, conservation and sustainable management of the forestry resources in, in Papua I New see. Guinea. What about some of the uh, legislation that we have implemented in Europe? Well, like I'm thinking about uh, uh, trading, for instance, emission. Uh, this is something that could be also implemented that in this part very of the very world. Helpful, indeed. No. You very want to spare some words helpful. about that? Yeah. No, yeah, that's exactly the next point uh, of importance there. Um, uh, we have uh, just recently launched a, a project with the Minister for Forest um, that uh, seeks to establish a, a multi purpose uh, inventory of the forestry in Papua New Guinea. So you don't count the trees, but you know where they are right. and what um, uh, quantity of carbon dioxide they have stored and what the biological diversity around them are, is. And you have all that in a big inventory and then you can go the next step to say, how can we put this asset into an international scheme where there is, um, uh, I don't think it's called compensation, but there, uh, where there is financial flow in order to keep the situation as it is. So, so we are very much supporting this idea. 
however, we have to accept that this is also a complicated idea and it is a medium to longer term idea. So uh, even the short term, I think, is in all of our interest if each of us in the world, each country does what is possible and then in the, in the medium to longer term sees what comes out of Paris, uh, hopefully a very ambitious uh, agreement and then lives up to the expectations and I to see. the opportunities that are in this agreement. And let me say some one further point perhaps very concretely to announce um, uh, since we put so much emphasis on climate change as European Union, we, we believe very much in the importance of um, uh, preserving the environment and containing climate change. Uh, we will be sending our um, climate change commissioner to Port Moresby, in fact. So he okay. will come for a visit in September on the occasion of the Pacific Island Forum Summit, okay, which excellent. will hold here on the 7th of, of September. Well, obvi obviously a lot of people are uh, having great hope for this uh, Paris uh, meeting coming up in December 2014, but mm. nobody actually has forgotten the failures of Copenhagen. So why would this will be any different this time? I mean, uh, Well, you know, international processes <laughs> are longer <laughs> processes. We know this. Um, uh, Copenhagen, uh, was labeled by, by some as a failure, others uh, still found useful elements that came out of Copenhagen. I personally would say uh, these uh, conferences are absolutely needed under, under the current situation and any progress we can make each time we meet is a good progress and we have to do more, it's true. Anything, something is better than nothing essentially on this issue. Let's go back on trading. Uh, trade, obviously, it's, it's, it's one of the big uh, uh, items uh, on your agenda. And if we look at the history of the European Union, I think trading, internal trading, is really what has, uh, in a way, provided us uh, uh, 40, 50 years of uh, peaceful environment, in a way, in, in Europe after the post-war uh, drama that we all have lived somehow, even maybe through our parents. So. Um, what would you say uh, trade could do for this part of the world? Yeah, thanks for um, pointing your finger on the European Union as a peace project. That's, that's what we were or still are in a way, but we were that in the beginning, certainly after World War II. Um, this year on the 8th of May, uh, we celebrate a Europe Day, which means basically seven, 70 years of uh, peace and uh, prosperity development in Europe. It's a great achievement uh, and that we have done through several mechanisms we have built into our union. One of this is the single market, which means we tear down all the, the border lines. We have completely free circulation of goods, services, capital and people within the European Union. And then we have reached out, as you rightly say, to others to say this trade idea is an interesting idea. The mm -hmm. more we are interlinked, the less we think we should battle against each other yes. because we have so much interest <laughs> in each other. Uh, and that is, a, is a quite an idea that has made a lot of career uh, also through the uh, World Trade Organization in a way. But here with Papua New Guinea, um, we uh, offered uh, in 2004, so some uh, 11 years ago, uh, to enter into trade negotiations. And in fact, we offered it to the whole of Africa, the Pacific and the Caribbean. And Papua New Guinea was uh, at the forefront really of taking this up, taking, taking up this offer and running with it, like in the, in the baseball uh, mm -hmm. um, field. You know, you grab the ball and you and run you towards, <laughs> exactly, you try to score. Okay. And Papua New Guinea was quite <laughs> successful in scoring um, to the extent that we were even a bit surprised how successful they were to scoring against us or with <laughs> us in a trade agreement. And in 2009, we signed up um, uh, I remember this very well because I was involved in these negotiations. Um, so it was a very um, tumultuous night uh, and it went till 11 o'clock and we had a lot of whiskey in the end. But uh, there was a trade agreement coming out of it, a bilateral trade agreement between Papua New Guinea and the European Union, which um, I still think today was quite a spectacular achievement because many other partners of us were rather doubtful and hesitant we, we had and we still have today also from, from some non-governmental organizations lots of criticism and resistance against this idea of concluding trade agreements. Um, but Papua New Guinea felt differently so they went forward and did it. 
and uh, it was then ratified in 2011 here and also on our side with the European Parliament and so it's fully applicable. To my knowledge there are only two other trade agreements in the whole Asia-Pacific region fully applicable which is with Korea, South Korea and with, um, um, with Singapore now. Um, but the third one is with Papua, Papua New Guinea, Guinea. And, and the country then also um, followed up and um, you see a lot of investment nowadays particularly in fish processing uh, based on this agreement which gives a solid ground for access to the European market which is the largest in the world after all with its 500 million um, consumers and, and fish is of course a product that's very much looked after in, 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 in Europe so research wanted. Uh, so Papua New Guinea uh, did um, uh, draw a lot of benefits in terms of jobs and, um, and value added uh, out of this agreement. And we are very pleased because it was meant to help with development basically. And nowadays we also speak uh, together jointly about how to ensure that the fishery stocks are sustainable for the future. So not just exploited because of trade agreement and everything is and gone. Everything gone. So this is an ongoing discussion which will be hopefully con concluded very soon. And we also talk about how better to link this whole huge agriculture sector up with market access so that more is exported and more is processed even before export. And that's of course also then a discussion you have more and more in the forestry sector where currently a lot of raw materials or round locks are exported. But in future there's a possibility, opportunity for Papua New Guinea to export much more processed uh, wood, processed logs. So would you say the future of Papua New Guinea is not so much in the extracting industries, it's much more into manufacturing perhaps or agriculture or downstreaming? Mm. Where would you say is the future of Papua New Guinea? Uh, the future of Papua New Guinea is certainly with a economically speaking, obviously, <laughs> with a measured and, and, and possibly cautious and gradual approach. I think uh, it's always dangerous to be catapulted into a completely new situation too fast because uh, the whole society and population has to be taken uh, uh, with this um, development. Uh, so I think that is great here because it is a very strong society. What what you have here, a society that knows it's right. We have a lot of customary landowners yes. and I personally think it's also an advantage. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not a disadvantage mm. because it, Why is that? it puts natural brakes perhaps on developments that otherwise would run very, very fast mm. and maybe too fast. Mm. Um, uh, so that, that the basis is very good. And, and the future, of course, uh, will have also to consider what we have already now, um, uh, oil and gas and minerals. Um, which are there, which are a great asset and can be exploited, uh, and also natural resources and, and even raw materials. But uh, the future will also be to go a step further and build on all of these assets which, which are here in a very rich measure in, in Papua New Guinea and uh, do, uh, um, to try more, get more benefits out for the country itself before everything is exported. Yes. And, and that I think has been happening in many, many economies around the world. And uh, I'm very confident it will also happen here and maybe the fish processing and increasingly the agricultural processing is the first indication of that. Thank you very much for watching the show. Stay tuned uh, for the next episode of Oxford Business Group. We will bring new guests uh, for our discussion on Papua New Guinea current affairs of business and economy. Thank you so much. And that's all we have for you tonight. For more business news, if you would simply like to view this episode again, visit MTV online at www.mtv.com.pg or to join the conversation, like our page on Facebook for daily business news or follow us on Twitter at BusinessPNG using the hashtag BusinessPNG. Until next week, have a pleasant evening. I'm Leanne Girari and this is BusinessPNG.